If you need a document for use abroad, what is usually required? Authentication. That is right. Generally, your document will not be accepted or honored in the other country if it is not duly authenticated in the country of its origin. May it be a special power of attorney, birth certificate, certificate of marriage, certificate of driving experience, school diploma, transcript of records, etc. And what easily comes to our mind is red ribbon. But since 2019, there has been a new process for authenticating these documents. Is red ribbon a thing of the past? Let's talk about that after this. Hello everyone, kumusta po kayo? I hope that everyone is doing well, fine and good. If you are new to this channel and you think that this channel can be of help in providing you with useful information, please feel free to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell icon so that you will get notified of our future videos. Maraming salamat po! Before, kung kinakailangan mo ang isang Philippine document na gagamitin mo abroad, whether for business, for work or for education sa ibang bansa, napakahaba po ng proseso upang maipa-authenticate ang dokumento na to. Tinatawag po ang authentication requirement na to na red ribbon. Medyo matagal po o mahaba po ang proseso ng red ribbon dahil kinakailangan mo pang ipa-certify ang document na to sa konsulado ng bansa kung saan mo ito gagamitin. Tinatawag po itong legalization or consularization. The old red ribbon process starts by getting a certification from the relevant government agency or office and then getting authentication by the Philippine Department of Foreign Affairs. After the authentication by the Philippine Department of Foreign Affairs, you must then take your documents to the foreign country's embassy or consulate for legalization. But now you have a reason to rejoice because the apostille has already replaced the red ribbon requirement when the Philippines joined the Hague Convention on Apostille on May 14, 2019. Indeed, it was a sigh of relief dahil mas simple na po ang proseso. Ano ba ang apostille? Ang apostille ay nagpapatotoo kung ang isang dokumento ba ay tunay o authentic. Ito ay sa pamamagitan ng pagbebirepika o pang matiyak o masiguro ng pamahalaan ng ibang bansa ang tao o institusyon na nag-issue nito at kung siya ba ay may kapangyarihan o otoridad na mag-issue ng dokumentong ito. Ang apostil po ay hindi gumagarantiya sa kung ano ang nilalaman mismo ng dokumento. Ang layunin ng apostil ay ang mapabilis ang proseso ng pag-authenticate ng mga dokumento sa pamamagitan ng pag-alis ng requirement ng legalization na dati ay ginagawa ng foreign embassy or consular office. In other words, tatanggapin sa ibang bansa ang dokumento as genuine on the basis of the apostille. In the Philippines, tanging ang Department of Foreign Affairs o DFA lamang po ang may authority o kapangyarihan na mag-apostilize ng mga documents. At may mga identified na offices ang DFA sa iba't ibang location sa Pilipinas na pwedeng mag ng mga documents. These are the DFA consular offices or satellite offices that offer apostille services. Please feel free to pause the video to find the office that is closest to your location. As I have mentioned, once your document is already apostilized, there is no longer a need to have your document authenticated in the process called legalization or consularization by the foreign embassy or consulate. So kung ang special power of attorney mo ay naka-apostil na mula sa DFA ng Pilipinas, hindi mo na ito kailangang ipa-authenticate sa US Embassy or Consulate upang magamit mo ito sa United States. Sapat na ang apostil na basihan ng mga taga United States upang masabi na ang dokumento na to ay authentic or genuine. Pwede mo rin gamitin ang dokumento na to in United Kingdom, Australia, Japan, Spain, Norway, Denmark, Saudi Arabia, or Italy which are members of the Apostille Convention. It will not work however kung gagamitin mo ang dokumentong ito sa mga bansang hindi kasapi ng Apostille Convention o sa mga bansang nag-object 
o sumalungat sa pagsapi ng Pilipinas noon sa Apostle Convention. Ang mga bansang nag-object sa pagsali ng Pilipinas sa Apostle Convention ay ang Austria, Finland, Germany at Greece. In that case, kakailanganin mong ipalegalize o ipa-authenticate ang dokumento sa imbahada o konsulado ng bansang yun. Same as the old process. But before you do that, I suggest na alamin mo muna kung kailangan ba talaga ang authentication for that document. For example, Canada is not a member of the Apostle Convention because of the unique requirement when it comes to international agreements. Kailangan po kasi ang pagpayag ng mga provinces ng Canada. But I was surprised because when I applied for a driver's license in Canada, I presented an apostilled certification from the Land Transportation Office in the Philippines and they simply required it to be authenticated by the Philippine Consulate in Toronto and I was given the credits for the number of years that I was a licensed driver in the Philippines. Ito naman po ang mga bansa at territories na kasapi ng Apostille Convention. Please feel free to pause the video to find out if your country of residence ay kasapi po ng Apostille Convention. Kung ang dokumento naman po ay galing sa bansang kasapi ng Apostle Convention at gagamitin ito sa Pilipinas, the same rule applies. Kung ang dokumento po ay naka-apostil na, pwede na itong gamitin sa Pilipinas at hindi nyo na po kailangang dalhin ito sa imbahada o konsulado ng Pilipinas upang ipa-legalize o ipa-consolarize. Alimbawa, kung kayo po ay nasa bansang kasapi ng Apostle Convention at nais nyo pong magpadala ng special power of attorney sa inyong representative sa Pilipinas para sa inyong transaction sa Pilipinas, sapat na po ang Apostle. Hindi nyo na po kailangang ipa-legalize o ipa-consularize ang document na to sa Philippine Embassy or Consulate. Just be mindful lang po na magkakaiba rin po yung processes at requirements ng bawat bansa pagdating po sa pag-apostil ng mga dokumento and their respective laws may authorize certain persons or agencies na pwedeng mag-apostil ng mga dokumento. Para naman po dun sa mga bansang hindi member ng Apostle Convention, ganun pa rin po yung process. Kailangang dumaan muna sa imbahada or konsulado ng Pilipinas ang mga dokumento for purposes of authentication so that they can be honored or accepted in the Philippines. As to what documents can be apostilled or apostilized, I will put the link in the description box of this video. So just very quickly, what's the new process now in the Philippines? Say for example, you want to submit a Philippine document abroad like a notarized affidavit, special power of attorney, NBI clearance, or a certificate of no marriage. What is now the procedure? First, you need to have the original document at hand. If it is a birth certificate, kailangan ang kopyang galing sa Philippine Statistics Authority. Kung certificate of driving experience, dapat galing ito sa main office ng Land Transportation Authority. Kung hindi original ang document, pwede naman ang certified true copy. Remember, hindi pwedeng ipa-apostil ang photocopy or Xerox copy. Ilalagay ko po sa description box ng video na to ang link para sa listahan ng mga dokumento na pwedeng ipa-apostil. Second, that original document must be certified by the issuing office or agency. Halimbawa, kung school records ito, dapat certified copy ito na inisyo ng eskwelahan. At dapat may kalakip itong Certification, Authentication, and Verification o CAV na galing sa DepEd for Elementary o High School Records. CHED naman para sa mga private colleges and universities at TESDA naman para sa mga technical o vocational courses. Kung state colleges and universities for transcript of records and diploma, Certified True Copy and Certification Authentication and Verification from the School. For notarized documents, katulad ng special power of attorney, affidavit, o kontrata, dapat may kalakip itong CANA o Certificate of Authority for a Notarial Act signed by the Executive Judge or Vice Executive Judge or any office authorized signatories na galing sa Regional Trial Court. Kung kompleto na ang mga dokumento, all you have to do is to submit the documents to the DFA or to any of its satellite offices na nabanggit ko kanina. As of now, I think, required pa rin ang online appointment bago kayo pumunta sa kanilang opisina. So, kailangan yung mag-book ng appointment online. I will put the link for online appointment in the description box of this video. You will be required to pay 100 pesos for regular processing at 200 pesos naman for express processing which can be released on the following day. 
just check on the website of the DFA for possible changes. If you cannot process it personally, you can send an authorized representative to process and claim the documents on your behalf, provided that the representative presents the following. Authorization letter from the owner and for minor applicants, the original special power of attorney must be executed by the parent or parents. The photocopy of the owner's ID, uh, which bears his or her signature. The photocopy and original copy of the representative's ID. As I have mentioned earlier, once you already have the Apostle document, you can use it in any of the countries that are members of the Apostle Convention except for Austria, Finland, Germany, and Greece. This is what makes it different from Red Ribbon kasi ang dokumento na na Red Ribbon na ay pwedeng gamitin lamang sa bansa ng embassy or consulate na nag-authenticate ng document. I hope that you have learned something from this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done it yet and hit that notification bell icon so that you will get notified of our future videos. Always remember, ignorance of the law excuses no one from compliance therewith. I will see you in my next video. Ingat po kayo.